What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love power, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now, today we'll be talking about Power Book for Force, Season 2, Episode 7. This is the recap. Now, I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points in this episode. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. And man, this was a banger. The title of the episode is called Chicago is Heating Up. And man, this episode was definitely hot. Your boy, Jannard, he was on one. He had me cracking up. I told y'all, they need to pay Chris Lofton more money. Because after what he's doing in this season, I mean, he need a pay raise. He's killing it. Had me cracking up when he saw me, Rhea and Tommy, you know, meet up. I told you guys the whole thing between those two is completely stupid. Everybody's been saying this since day one. It's entirely too risky. And we know eventually everybody's going to know about it. The feds, they know about it because we know in the next episode, Stacey Marks, she's going to tell Tommy Egan about it. And I cannot wait to see how Miguel's going to handle all of this once he figures out that Tommy is clapping his sister's cheeks. Y'all heard what Mireya said. She said that her last boyfriend, Carlos, he got taken out by Miguel because of her messing around with him. So I definitely cannot wait to see how everything plays out. We know Tommy and Diamond, they taking over. They getting all the crews together. But Miguel does not know everything that they're doing. And once he figures out that they went and made the deal with the DSD crew, we already know he going to be pissed off. And he's going to start to think like, man, grandma was right. Tommy is doing entirely too much. He is taking over. And it's just a matter of time before he tries to take me out. And what y'all think about your boy Vic? He caught another body. Shout out to your boy Brian Keys, who plays Special Agent Vargas. He got taken out by Vic because he was entirely too eager. He was doing too much. I told you guys in my Quick Thoughts video, I mean, after Tommy saw him earlier on in the episode, you would think he would calm down. But no, when you do what he is doing, it's just a matter of time before you're taken out. And Vic, he wasn't about to slip up in that particular moment because Tommy, he was on one. He knew something was going down. And I'm pretty sure Tommy is really going to be watching Vic in these last few episodes that we're going to end up seeing. And we know Claudia and Shanti, they made a deal in this episode and they was killing it. But we also know that Elise, Claudia's love interest, she just may, you know, make it a little bit harder for Shanti. And I got a feeling it's not going to end well for Elise because Shanti is on one and she'd be damned if somebody comes in her way and stops her from getting this money. And... We didn't get to see D-Mac at all. I told you guys, I'm like, okay, when we going to see the D-Mac storyline? We know he got sent off to that youth academy. We still didn't see anything in this episode. We only got three more episodes left. So hopefully we see something very soon. But let's begin, man. Let's hop right into it. What did we see in episode seven titled Chicago was heating up? Now the episode starts out with Tommy clapping Mireya's cheeks. He was having a hell of a time, y'all. I did see some of you guys mention that y'all believe Tommy's going to knock her up. Well, the way things are looking, I won't be surprised. But we know Miguel, he popped up to the party unannounced. And Mireya, she was shaking in her boots. And we know Miguel, he's getting tired of the Serbs. He wants to handle this issue. Tommy tells him, like, look, you should go to El Che and let him know that Maybe cutting them off is the best move. I mean, these dudes are just taking out innocent people, shooting up projects. It's bad for business. So we know Miguel's going to take this information to El Che and see what he can do. But Tommy and Mireya, they were slipping up, y'all. And luckily, Tommy grabbed her work badge because Miguel, he wouldn't end up seeing it if Tommy never grabbed it. Now, we get to Diamond's P.O. Eddie Kane Jr., looking boy he tells diamond that he's actually doing a good job and he wants him to come to this fundraiser to give a speech pretty much letting the people know that he is not a part of cbi and all this stuff and he's changed his ways he is doing well ever since he's been released from prison but we know diamond's gonna have to think about if he's gonna do this or not now stacy marks is getting a lot of pressure put on her and it seems like if she does not get the big fish soon she's gonna end up losing her job so y'all know she was very you know stressed out in this episode and she took it out on her crew. And of course, she took it out on Vic Flynn. Now, we get the Shanti showstopper page and Raheem. Apparently, he is telling her people are talking about Jannard. They're talking about her and how they know he's a junkie. And they know 
This is most likely bad for business and they're not feeling it. Shanti goes off on him, telling him that, look, we grew up together. You should be looking out for me. And if they run their mouth, put them in check. Let them know what time it is. I mean, she punked this dude straight out. Him and him up. I told y'all. They were going to you know, show us a different side of Shanti. She was way more aggressive. Hell, I thought she was about to take Raheem out like Tupac took Raheem out on Juice. She didn't give a damn. Had that boy shook. Now we get to Tommy and the crew. They meet up at the Rego. They're trying to throw the feds off. So they meet up at a, you know, a different location. And of course, we see a new character, David Otanga. You guys may know him from the WWE. He is here in Power Book for Force. Tommy wants to bring all their crews together. The only thing is they have to, you know, get a deal made with the DSD crew, right? Jannard ain't feeling it because he's like, look, what are we going to do about the Serbs? Because we know what the Serbs did in the last episode and we know everybody pretty much wants to get payback. Tommy tells them like, look, don't worry about the Serbs. They're going to get taken care of all the way at the top. Just don't do anything stupid. Now, Vic and your boy Jannard meet up outside and we know Vic is telling him, look, Maybe this deal we got with Tommy is a good thing. We just got to listen. But we know Jannard, he's not really feeling it. And Vic tells him, well, I know you were talking to my sister. And of course, Jannard's like, okay, so you've been watching my moves. So it lets me know that these two, they just may have some issues as the season continues to air out. Now, Shanti, she goes and she meets up with Claudia. and She wants to make a move with her, y'all. She wants to basically move these pills in the clubs. She tells her, you need my people in I need, you know, basically the product. So let's make a move together. And of course, Claudia was talking about a 60-40 split, but Shanti was like, hell nah. Then Claudia said, you know what? It's just me and you, we females, we ain't about to be basically going through no issues about a split. Let's just make this move and see where we can go. So we're going to see these two have that connection based off what we saw in this episode. These two can be very, very dangerous because we know Claudia, she's like the thinker. And we know Shanti, she be thinking in, she's the muscle. Then we get to El Che and your boy Miguel. Of course, Miguel is pissed off because he's telling him, look, he's never made a move on the Serbians after all the stuff that they have done. And he just needs um, El Che to cut off the connect to the Serbians. That's all he needs is bad for business. And having Tommy along is helping out Miguel in his argument because we know they're making a lot of money. So... They don't really need the Serbs. So now we know El Che is thinking about this and he's going to go to the Serbians and let them know that they cut off. And that's exactly what he ended up doing. Your boy Murkovic, he was pissed. I mean, he was upset. And y'all know in episode eight, he's about to turn up. Of course, he's going to have Claudia on his side and y'all know it's about to be a major shootout. But he definitely needs to go after what he pulled off in that last episode. And your boy Gennard is tweaking. He is still recovering from his addiction, Shanti, she is seeing it and she is hoping and praying that he does not go back to his old ways. And we know Jannard, he fought, y'all. He fought and he got some good intel on Tommy by the end of the episode. And then we see Tommy and Vic. We know Tommy has to go and meet up with Shanti. And look, your boy, Special Agent Vargas, he's out there doing entirely too much. Tommy sees him. Tommy knows the feds are watching, which puts him on alert. This was his warning right here, y'all. I don't know why Special Agent Vargas kept pressing. I mean, I know Stacey, you know, Marks told him to make sure that he's doing his job. But still, you got to be a little bit more discreet. And we can tell that Shanti was kind of pissed off one time he came there to collect. She didn't like that. But Tommy was not playing around. He don't give a damn where he's at. If you owe him money, you got to pay. And that's exactly what she ended up doing. But you can tell she was pissed off one time he stepped into that boxing club. Now... We get to Jannard and his boy Raheem, and it seems like he's kind of going back and forth on his thoughts about taking out Tommy because Raheem is all in his head, and we know Jannard's like, look, screw it. You got that strap. I need you to go get it because he wants to go ahead and get the job done. But for a moment, it really did seem like Jannard was about to slip up. I'm glad he didn't. I told y'all I want to see him recover. I just want to see him stay loyal to his brother, but from the looks of it, he's going back and forth in his head on what he really wants to do. Then we get to Elise and Claudia. They're at the club. Shanti is there as well. And Elise and Claudia, they end up getting robbed by this dude, Trent. I mean, he was running his mouth. And after he ended up doing this, he decided that he wanted to stick around. Like, are you crazy? Why would you stay there after what you just did? Shanti, she goes up in there and she checks the dude, puts him in his place, puts those hands on the dude, had him shook, y'all. And we know Claudia and Shanti, 
They're not playing around. As I told you guys, these two together are very dangerous. I just don't see Elise getting in the way because if she does, we already know what time it is. It's going to be over for her. Now, we get to Vic and Stacy Marks. She's pissed off because she could lose her job. She tells him like, look, we need more. You're going to have to wear this wire because she knows about the deal that Tommy's about to make with the DSD crew because Vic ended up mentioning it. And now Vic is, you know, kind of scared, y'all. He's nervous. Like, man, I'm going to get played. They're going to find out about this. I'm pretty much a dead man. Well, you signed up for it, Vic. So now you're going to have to deal with the consequences and you're going to have to figure out how you're going to get up out of this. Now we get to Jannard. He's in the car. He got the strap. He tweaking, y'all. He's thinking about it. He's like, man, I'm about to go ahead and take out Tommy Egan. But then he sees me, Rhea. He sees this. And I'm cracking up the whole time. Like, man, this boy, Tommy, he is really slipping up. Jonard once again, makes a big impact on the episode. It would have been crazy if you would have put this information out. But we know Shanti ended up telling him, don't do it just yet. But man, that was crazy, man. Now, Mireya tells Tommy, like, look, her last boyfriend, Carlos, he got taken out by her brother. And I'm thinking, like, you know this. You know what your brother has done, but you still kicking it with Tommy, like, you don't give a damn because you in love. Like, okay. So we already know the consequences of this. Tommy's talking about that he's good. He's not going to let anything happen or whatever. Well, we know that's not going to be the case. And it's just a matter of time before this whole storyline blows up. I really cannot wait to see Miguel's face once he realized what's really going on. Now, Tommy and Diamond, they go and meet up with Miguel. They tell him they want more product and they want lower prices. Of course, Miguel's like, hell nah, that's not happening. You know, Cradium Head, he was back there running his mouth. And Tommy's like, look, man, we're making all this money. The serves, they're not in the picture no more. We're going to be able to make a lot more money if you allow this to happen. And of course, Miguel's talking about that means he's going to have to go to El Che and try to push for this. And he's pretty much putting himself at risk by doing this. But Tommy says, look, it's going to be all worth it when it's all said and done. Now, Miguel does tell them. If this does not go as planned, if something happens, it's going to be there next. So y'all know he ain't playing around. The sad part is Tommy is using him and Miguel, he just does not see it. Even though grandma was telling him what time it was. Now, we get to Tommy and Diamond. They're talking about meeting up with Chavo and of course the DSD crew. But we know Diamond, he has to do this whole you know fundraiser speech. So he's not going to be able to make it. So Tommy end up going with Vic. But if they end up making this deal, they pretty much have all the crews. They're pretty much that much closer to executing the game plan that Tommy wants. Now, Diamond, he gives a speech at the fundraiser talking about, you know, changing his ways. He was locked up for a long time and he's trying to do the right thing. Of course, Leon and his moms is out there, you know, proud of Diamond. And Diamond took the opportunity to ask her out to dinner or whatever. And we know he took care of Jamal. So he's not going to be an issue or Will he come back trying to seek revenge? I guess we're going to find out soon enough. Now, we get to Vic and Special Agent Vargas. He tells Vic, like, look, doing this, helping them out with Tommy is going to make the streets safer. It's going to save, you know, a lot of innocent people. Hell, even his daughter, if something goes down, right? And he tells Vic, if anything goes wrong, just get rid of the device or whatever. He's pretty much showing like he's concerned for Vic. And I'm thinking like, dude. You're telling him all this lets me know what time it is. You're talking about your family. You're getting real emotional, man. So I know your days are numbered. Now, Miguel's grandmother tells him you cannot trust Tommy. She's been telling him this since day one. She's telling him don't make the same mistake as his grandfather made or whatever in the past. Miguel think he basically thinks he has it all under control, right? Telling her that they're making a lot more money and they're about to be the only connect in Chicago. He about to really be running stuff. Not realizing that his grandma, she's an OG, she knows the game, and she understands that something's up with Tommy. But I guess Miguel, he's going to find out soon enough. He does mention that he's about to meet up with the DSD crew and make them an offer. Not realizing that Tommy's already two, three steps ahead of the game, and he's meeting up with them right now. Which the deal did seem kind of shaky at first, but they end up squashing the issues. We know Tommy's window ended up getting shot up, but Chavo told him he's going to take care of it. And they end up making this deal, which lets us know that 
Miguel will be pissed off. It's crazy because Chavo was talking about how he didn't really like Miguel like that. He liked the Serbs better, but Miguel, he's Mexican. He thinks he's better than him because he's Puerto Rican. He said Miguel's on that old school stuff and he ain't really having it. Tells Tommy, just beat his price and they gonna be good. So y'all know Tommy is definitely cool with that, especially since the Serbs, they're not in the picture no more. And we know Chavo and his crew, they're gonna need somebody to get that weight from. Now we get to your boy Diamond. He's about to kick it with Leon's mom, but she said, you know what? She'll rather stay in. And she came over a little bit early. I knew by the look on her face, I already knew what time it was. She wants to get those cheeks clapped. And that's exactly what your boy Diamond's been doing. He's been having a hell of a season, man. And I already know he had a hell of a time with this one, y'all. Is he falling in love? Would Jamal be an issue? Well, we gonna see. But it seems like Diamond, he is cool with her. And he's cool with her son, Leon. Now we get to Elise and Claudia. And it seems like she really wants to be in the drug game. She is talking about how her mom is a silent partner at one of the clubs. And they can continue to push weight. Of course, Claudia tells her we're going to need Shanti in order to do this. But Elise is like, nah, we ain't going to need her. We good. Which lets me know this is not going to end well for Elise. This whole love relationship that she got with Claudia, it ain't going to last, y'all. Y'all already know what time it is. Your girl, Shanti, going to cut her water off. Now, we get to Shanti and Jannard. He ends up giving her her boxing chain back. And he's looking good, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. Your boy Jannard is fighting this addiction. She ends up telling him about the move that she made with Claudia and how it's gonna be good and that pretty much she still is on his side. They can do this. They can figure out this whole Tommy thing and eventually take over when it's all said and done. Jannard tells her like, look, I got some intel my damn so I found out that Tommy is messing around with Miguel Garcia's sister, Mireya, and he wants to expose him right now. But Shanti tells him, no, just wait. We're going to watch him dig his own grave. Boy, if Jannard would have put this out right then and there, man, that would have been crazy. That would have been crazy as hell. Now, at the end of the episode, we see Vic and Tommy. Of course, Tommy's telling him he did good today with the deals that they made. We know Vic is supposed to be putting that tracker on Tommy's car. And of course, he had that necklace on as a recording device. Now, once Tommy ends up leaving, Special Agent Vargas makes a stupid move. I mean, he rushes out to Vic trying to get some intel about what he's done. Tommy pops up like, dude, what the hell is going on? So he knows Vic is having a conversation with the feds. Of course, Vic is trying to play it off. Like, look, I don't know what this dude is doing. He just pops up on me. Tommy says, well, if you're not working with him, you need to prove it. And you need to take him out right now. And that's exactly what Vic ended up doing. So I guess we smoking on that special agent Vargas pack in this episode, y'all. And Vic... He ain't playing around this season. We already know he was going to be on one. He is just going through so much, man. I was just hoping that Vic can get out of all of this. But now he's in too deep even more. And taking out law enforcement, that's the last thing that you want to do. So we're going to see how Vic is going to end up handling this. And what Stacey March is going to think about what just went down if she finds out about all the details. Because y'all know she's going to ask him some questions about what happened. And how do you guys see this playing out with Tommy, Miguel, the whole deal with the DSD crew? I mean, all of this is about to get exposed in the next episode. And it seems like it's going to be a war with the Serbs and a big shootout with Tommy and all of them. And I can't wait to see how it's all going to unfold. Now, I want to thank you guys once again for all the love, all the support. And I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.